Welcome, wilderness explorers. It's Miss Gisa, and today I'm at Joshua Tree National Park. Joshua Tree is shared by two deserts, the Colorado Desert and the Mojave Desert. And the Mojave Desert is where the Joshua Trees grow. Different plants and animals live in each of the areas. Do you know why this area is called a national park? National parks are protected places that are set aside to be preserved so that everyone now and in the future will be able to enjoy and learn from them. Each park is unique and teaches us about either an important habitat, a historical event that took place there, or the history of people who lived there long ago. Now, before we go any further, let's discuss the word desert. Some people think a desert is covered by lots of sand, but not all deserts have sand. Land can be covered by broken rocks and stones or even snow and still be considered a desert. A desert is any place that is very dry and hardly rains, less than 10 inches of rain a year. Did you know that some deserts are hot and some are cold? Only certain kinds of special plants and animals have adapted to survive in the harsh desert. One of the places we'll visit today is called the Choya Cactus Garden, where I'll show you some plants that live right here in the desert. We'll also keep our eyes out for animals that live here too, like snakes, lizards, mice, birds, and scorpions. Before visiting a national park or any new place, I like to read books about where I'm going. You can get these from the library, or I've also put the links to the books I'm sharing down below. Let's go over some of the special books that I've picked out to prepare you for a visit to Joshua Tree. The first book I wanna share with you is called Joshua Tree National Park, and it's a rookie reader. And this is a great book for young children, ages three to seven. Um, it tells you all about the park. There's very little text on each page, so it'll keep your little one's attention. The next story is called Desert Baths. And this is a great story about some of the animals that live in the desert. And um, it has beautiful illustrations and also shows you a variety of the animals that live here day and night. And then, I love this story. This is called Desert Days and Desert Nights. And again, this is, has beautiful illustrations and shows you what the Mojave Desert looks like during the day and also at night so you can get familiar with the plants and animals that you'll be seeing. So you can see the Joshua trees in there as well. And then finally, two books for either older children or parents. There's the National Parks of the Southwest, which goes over lots of the different parks, but there is a section in here on Joshua Tree. And then the final book that I'd like to share with you is called California Deserts. And this book goes over many of the California deserts, but Joshua Tree and the Mojave Desert is part of uh, the book. So lots of information here as well. Now, let's head over to the Oasis Visitor Center so we can grab a map and a Junior Ranger book. And I'll tell you a little bit about that too. Okay, explorers, we're in front of the Oasis Visitor Center and you'll wanna stop here or any one of the visitor centers in Joshua Tree so you can grab a map, a little newsletter telling you about the highlights of the park and what you can do while you're here. And then finally, the Junior Ranger book. Um, this Junior Ranger program is a very educational program that teaches children and their parents all about the animals, plants, and the history of the park. It also teaches children how they can help take care of the park and teach others to do the same. The more people that know how special Joshua Tree National Park and all of our national parks are, the more people there will be to take care of them and enjoy them responsibly in the future. So what you do is you go to the ranger station um, inside the visitor center and speak to a ranger. They'll give you a, a booklet. You can fill it out depending on your age. They'll tell you how many pages you need to fill out. It's really a beautiful book. It's really beautifully illustrated. Um, and you can go around the park 
and um, fill it out and learn more about the plants and animals um, that live here and make Joshua Tree their home. After you finish the booklet, you take an oath and promise to tell other people about Joshua Tree and how to take care of it and be responsible while in the park. And then you earn a little Junior Ranger badge. Um, in addition, what we like to do in our family is, as you can see, I'm wearing all of the National Park patches. So we purchase a patch um, every time my daughter completes a Junior Ranger booklet and that way she has a memory of all the places that she's been. And if you look close, you can see that this is the patch for Joshua Tree National Park, which is pretty cool because it has Joshua Trees on it. Now, before we head out to explore, I wanna make sure that you have your hat, a canteen full of water, sunscreen, along with your Junior Ranger booklet and park map. Let's go. So we're in front of the Oasis of Mara. I've been told to keep an eye out. If we're gonna see Roadrunners, this is probably the place. If you haven't already watched our episode on plants versus animals, be sure to watch and learn the differences between plants and animals. But for now, just remember that animals and plants both need water to live. You can find five oases in Joshua Tree National Park. Do you know the difference between an oasis and a spring? An oasis is an area in the desert that has a supply of fresh water where date palms or other trees and plants can grow and where animals can drink. You can see behind me that plants are pretty green here, which is unusual for the desert. The water may come from an underground spring. A spring is a place where water flows out of the ground. So it doesn't rain very often here. The oasis and springs are very important to the plants and animals that make the desert their home. It is because of the oasis and springs here that Native Americans and later ranchers and miners had drinking water and water for mining. Did you know that there are about 300 abandoned gold and silver mines here? It's such a windy day today at Joshua Tree National Park. The park is named after these trees called the Joshua trees. Let's take a look at one of these trees. No two are alike. Do you see how it is twisty? And look at these spikes. The Joshua tree is a member of the agave family. Scientists think that these trees are nearly 150 years old. Joshua trees grow only in the Mojave Desert. The Mojave Desert is the only place on earth where Joshua trees grow. A Joshua tree may look like a cactus, but it is actually not. It's not a tree either. Joshua trees are a type of yucca plant. People and especially children, love Joshua Tree because of the giant misshapen boulders you can look at and climb on. These boulders were formed when the ice, strong rains, and wind wore away parts of the rock. It is believed that these rocks are over a billion years old. How do you think these boulders got here? Well, these rock piles and boulders have taken millions of years to form. Magma from deep inside the earth pushed upwards, breaking off pieces of rock along the way. The magma then cooled and hardened to stone, and the stone eventually cracked. As the ground above eroded, water seeped into the cracks and turned the rock to soil. As the soil wore away, it left these boulders that are jutting out all around. There are many mountains in the park, but you have to be a pretty experienced hiker to climb to the top of Quail Mountain, which is the tallest and has no developed trails. Ryan Mountain is the second tallest and easier to get to the top of to experience the great views. But here we are at Skull Rock, and it's one of the best easy hikes in Joshua Tree and a great one to do with kids. One side of this boulder looks like a human skull, thus the name. When you visit, you can draw a picture of your favorite rock formation, and you can even give it a funny name. 
What shapes do you see in these boulders? How many different of rocks can you find? We'll go explore some of the boulders in just a moment. A book that is really neat and you might enjoy is called The Wonder Rocks. So this is Split Rock Trail, and it's another easy and great hike to do with kids. The trailhead is down the road from Skull Rock, and the hike is a bit longer than Skull Rock, about two miles. Split Rock gets its name from this gigantic rock, which is at the start of the trailhead, and it has a huge crack in it. So here I am in front of the Choya Garden and plants that live in the desert need very little water to grow. Some desert plants bloom after a rainfall and other plants have roots to reach water that is deep underground. Cactus plants grow in deserts because they store water in their stems for a long time. Instead of leaves, they have sharp spines. Cacti come in many shapes and they grow as tall as trees. Some have colorful flowers or fruit you can eat like prickly pears. Desert plants are unique and have adaptations that help them survive when the temperatures rise in the summer. See these white hairs on the leaves or white spines? These reflect the sun's rays off of the plant and provide some shade for the stems. Some have a waxy coating that protects them from losing water. Some cacti need specific types of animals to pollinate them. Because bats are active at night, we call them nocturnal, these cacti bloom at night to attract bats. Did you know that people long ago shared messages to each other by drawing pictures on rocks? Today, we use cell phones, emails, letters, music, and even dance as ways of communicating. I'm at the start of the Barker Dam Trail, and I'll take you to Barker Dam, which right now has no water flowing through it. We'll see some plants along the way that I'll talk to you about, and then we'll see some pictographs and petroglyphs at the end, um, which are the ways that the Native Americans that lived here long ago communicated with each other. The hike in is about a mile and a half loop surrounded by these beautiful boulders along the way. Many plants can be found here in the Mojave Desert, and this is a prickly pear. Different plants feed the animals that live here. Let's go look at a juniper tree next. Here you can see the California juniper tree. And long ago, the natives would eat these berries either raw or roasted. And now, animals that live in the Mojave Desert, like coyotes, and other small animals use the berries for moisture. So they eat them, and that's how they get water. Okay, now I'm gonna show you some petroglyphs and pictographs that were left here from the Native Americans. The pictographs are painted in red, black, and white and are found usually on the ceilings and walls of rock shelters, whereas the petroglyphs are found um, carved into canyon walls and boulders. For locals, Joshua Tree makes a great day trip, but if you reserve a campsite, setting up camp is a snap. A beautiful part of experiencing Joshua Tree National Park takes place at night. We are camping at Jumbo Rocks Campground in Joshua Tree, but there are many different campsites here. I love Jumbo Rocks because you are nestled inside the unique rock formations and kids love to climb around here. Did you know that the clouds act like a blanket at night? 
thick, heavy clouds help keep warm temperatures on land. When there are no clouds at night, the land loses all the heat from the sun that had built up all day. Because deserts are so dry, they don't have many clouds. Deserts that get very hot during the day, like Joshua Tree, can get very cold at night. Okay, this is my last stop on the way out of Joshua Tree. This is the Joshua Tree entrance to the National Park. And I just always love to stop in the gift store and see what they have. And I came across a little desert tortoise. Did you know that desert tortoises can store up to a quart of water in their bladders and can go weeks without eating or drinking? That's impressive. They dig burrows to hide from the heat during the day and dig holes to catch rain when it does fall. And I also grabbed this little critter. Do you guys know who this is? This is a little kangaroo rat. And kangaroo rats also live in the desert. They don't need to drink. What? Yeah, that's because they use the water stored in the seeds that they eat. That's how they get their water. Now, I also picked up two books. I picked up the Easy Field Guide to Common Desert Birds and also the Easy Field Guide to Common Desert Cactus. So these are really easy books that you can use when you're on the trail to identify different kinds of cactus or different kind of birds. They also have one for snakes as well. Thanks for joining me on this adventure through Joshua Tree National Park. Stay tuned for future National Park visits. So don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss another episode.